Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to talk about strings in C++. So you might be wondering why I haven't covered the topic sooner, and that is because strings in C++ are quite different from strings in Java and Python. So in this video, you're going to learn about strings in C++ and the differences between strings in C++ and strings in other programming languages. So first off, a string is not a primitive data type. So a primitive data type would be integers, booleans, characters, floats, doubles. A string is actually a class, and you can think of a class as a more complex data type with more functionality. Since it is a class in C++, we would actually have to import it. So include string. So to declare a string variable, you would do std colon colon string just like C out and N line, string is part of the standard library. So you need to include the qualifiers here. And then over here, I would put a variable name. So my name, and then within double quotes, I can put any sequence of characters. So this could be letters, numbers, or symbols. So in this case, I would just put my name. And then I can print it out. So I can do std colon colon C out my name std colon colon n line. Okay, so if I save and run our program, you can see we get Kenny. So two things I want to note here, and that is, I'm going to use namespace std for most of my tutorials. So I'm going to do using namespace std. That way, I don't have to worry about these qualifiers. So if you're working on a C++ project, then this is not ideal. You should use the std qualifier instead of using the namespace. In this case, I'm just going to use namespace std so that it's easier to read for beginners. And I'm just going to focus on the main concepts. Another thing to note is actually, if I don't include string here, and I save, I can actually run my program just fine. And that is because when you include iostream, within the code for iostream, there is include string. But if you're working with older compilers, you may need to include string. So in this case, you can see there's this squiggly line here. And that is because the IntelliSense is saying that I need to include string. So I'm just going to include string. OK, and now you can see the squiggly line is gone. And because strings are classes, you can also create strings using the constructor. So I can do string my name. And I can use the constructor. So basically, parentheses. And then I can pass in the value, so Kenny. And this is also a valid declaration, so I can print this. So let's save and run our program. And you can see this also works. Now, if you know other programming languages, you may realize that this is actually a strange way to create a variable and invoke the constructor. And that is because in C++, variables are not pointers. In C++, variables and pointers are two different concepts. When I create a variable in C++, I am actually creating a variable to store the object. So instead of pointing to the object, C++ will store the object instead. So what I mean is that in other languages, like Java, for instance, you might do string my name, and then you would assign it and invoke the constructor of string. So you might do something like string, pass in your value like so, and Maybe in some programming languages, there might be a new keyword like this. So here we are creating a string using the constructor and then assigning it to the variable. And the syntax works like this because in other programming languages like Java and Python, the variables are pointers. So they are pointing to the object. That's why we assign it to the variable. Whereas in C++, we are storing the object in the variable. Okay, so in a later video, I will explain more on pointers in C++ and how they're different from variables in C++. So in C++, if I don't include a value and I just do this and declare a variable string and I save and run my program, it compiles and runs just fine. There's no error and there's no null value or undefined value. And that is because, as I mentioned earlier, in C++, the variables store the value. So technically, when I declare string my name to like this, we have a default value of an empty string. So this right here is an empty string. So this is a string object. So it's not null or undefined. It is still a string. All right, so just remember, in C++, variables cannot be null. There will always be some value. And earlier, I mentioned that string is a class. So just as a history lesson, C++ used to be called C with classes. 
And this is because in C, there are no classes. So you might be wondering, what would the type be for a string? How would strings be represented? And basically, a string is just an array of characters. So what I can do here is I can assign string my name to to an array of characters like so. And this will run just fine. So if I run my program, you can see we get Kenny Kenny. Okay. And the translation works both ways. So I can say character my name three, and I'm going to make it a character array, and I can just assign it Kenny like so. And then let's also print this out. Okay. So let's save and run our program. And you can see we get Kenny, Kenny, and Kenny. Okay. All right. So these are some ways you can create strings. This is more of the way we would normally do so in C++. And this would be basically called a C string. So you might be wondering, what is the difference? And again, the difference is a string is a class, whereas a C string or a character array is a primitive data type. So it's just an array of characters. So with a class, you have more functionality. So let's talk about that. So basically, because strings are arrays of characters, we can actually access each individual character by its index. So I can say my name zero, and I can do my name three. So these are the index values and index starts at zero. And if you want to learn why that is, I have a video on that on my YouTube channel, so you can check it out. But basically zero is the first character and one is the second character, two is the third character and three is the fourth character. So if I save and run a program, zero would be K and three would be this N over here. And as you can see, we get K N. And alternatively, instead of doing it like this with the brackets, you can use the function dot at and you can pass in the index like so. So I can save and run my program. And you can see we get KN, KN. All right, so these are just two ways of doing the same thing. And another thing you can do is get the number of characters in your string. So the number of characters is referred to as the size or the length of a string. So in C++, we have a dot length function. So if I save and run my program here, we should get five. And as you can see, we get five because there are five characters. And if I have an empty string like this, and I just declare it, and I save and run my program, you can see we get an empty string and the size is zero. And there are some ways to determine whether your string is empty or not. One of the ways is just comparing the length and seeing if it's equal to zero. Now, if I run this program, I will get an error, and that is because of order of operation. So I need to put this inside parentheses. And another way to do it is comparing the string directly. So instead of comparing the length to see if it's equal to zero, I can do my name is equal to an empty string, like so. So if I save and run my program, we should get true for these two values. And as you can see, we get a length of zero and one, one, both of which mean true. But actually in C++, there is a function for the string to determine whether it's empty or not. So I can do C out my name dot empty. And this will return a Boolean true if it's empty and false if otherwise. So if I save and run my program, you can see we get true because this is an empty string. And if I write Kenny over here and I save and run my program, we get five for the length and false, 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 okay? And the length function is also useful because you can use it to get the last character of your string. So I can do my name brackets, my name dot length minus one. So because index starts at zero, all the numbers are shifted over by one. So the first character is index zero, second is index one and so on. The fifth character would be at index four. So the length is five, so five minus one, we get four. And as you can see, we can get the last character like so with a Y. But we actually don't need to do this in C++ because there is a back function. And you can probably guess, we also have a front function. So this will give you the last element and the first element of the string. So as you can see, we get Y and K. And another difference between C++ and other programming languages is that strings in C++ are mutable. And what this basically means is that I can go ahead and take this my name variable 
and edit each individual character, I can add more characters, and it will still be the same object. And in other programming languages, you would actually have to create a string every time if you want to add more characters. So here I can do my name, and I'm going to do at index one, I want to change this character to an at symbol. So if I save and run my program, you can see the E has been changed at index one to an at symbol. Now you cannot do this in other languages. Instead, you would have to create a whole new string object to have this different value. Another thing that I can do is add to the end of my string. So I can do my name plus equal, and I can add more characters. So I can add an exclamation mark. But I can also use this syntax to add strings to my string. So I can do my name plus equal C++. Okay, and now if I save and run my program, you can see I modify my string. I changed the value at index one. I've added a new character, which is the exclamation mark. And I also added a string to the end, which is C++. So this cannot be done in other languages without creating another string. So one example would be my name. I would have to create another string and do my name plus C++, like so. So this action is the same as this. You'll get the same value. But the difference between these two is this one's directly modifying the string, whereas this one, we are taking the value of my name and concatenating it with another string and then creating a new string, which we will assign to my name. So in C++, we don't have to do this. The only time you would want to do this is if you want to save the original value. And so for instance, maybe I want to create a username and it involves my name plus maybe one, two, three. I might want to do it this way instead of directly modifying my name to add one, two, three over here. And that is because perhaps I want to save this original value in the same variable. So this would be a use case for where you would want to create a new string using the addition operator. Okay, so that's how you can use the plus equal or plus operators to modify strings. So aside from using those operations, you can also use the built-in functions for strings. So if I want to add another character at the end, I can do my name dot push back and I can put the character. So maybe I can put an exclamation mark here and this will do the same thing as plus equal character. So if I save and run my program, you can see we get Kenny with the exclamation mark. Another thing you can do is call the append function. So my name dot append and pass in two values. So the first one is how many times you want to repeat the character. So maybe I want to repeat it five times and here I put the character. Okay, so basically this will append a string of five stars. So you can see we push back the exclamation mark and then we append the star character five times. And you can use the append method to append a string instead of a character. So I can do my name dot append. And here I don't have to specify the number of characters. I can just write it all out. So I can just do coding like so. And I can save and run my program. And as you can see, we push back the exclamation mark. Then we appended the asterisk five times. And then we appended the string coding. And all of these methods are adding to the back of the string. And what if you don't want to add to the back of the string? Well, what you can do is use the insert method. So I can do my name dot insert. Here you would be specifying which index you want to insert at. So if I want to insert at the front, I would do zero. And here maybe I want to insert a string. So let's type a, 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 like so. And this would insert this string at index zero. So index zero is over here where k is. So it's going to push k over and insert at index zero. Okay. And I can repeat the process and maybe insert at index three. And maybe I want to insert some dollar signs. So maybe I want to insert three dollar signs at index three. What would the string look like? So if I save and run my program, you can see the string will be over here. And you might be wondering why it's over here. And that is index three would be zero, one, two, three. So index three would be over here. So why is it over here? And that is because when we call insert the first time, and we insert five A's, this N over here is no longer at index three. So index zero would now be A, then one, two, three. So it would insert it over here like so. All right, so that's how you would insert a value at a specific index. Or if you want, you can just add more values at the end of the string, okay? 
And finally, let's talk about deleting characters from the string. And so to delete character, just like how there is pushback for adding a character to the end, there is popback. So this will delete the last character from your string. So if I save and run my program, you can see we've just deleted the Y. And of course, if I call it again, we would delete the last two characters, okay? And what if you don't want to delete from the end? Maybe you want to delete at the front or at any position. So in that case, you would need to use the erase function. So if I want to delete at the front, I would use the erase function. So this is similar to insert in that you need to provide an index. So if I want to delete from the front, I'll just do index zero. And you would also have to pass in another parameter. And this time it will be how many characters starting from this index. So if I just want to delete the first character at index zero, I can just put in one here. Okay, so now if I save and run my program, you can see I've just deleted the K at index zero. And I can delete multiple characters. So let's say I want to delete starting from index one, I want to delete three characters. So index one is E, so one, two, three, I will be deleting this substring. So a part of a string is called substring. So now if I save and run my program, you can see I get KY, okay? All right, so these are all the ways that you can modify a string. And if you don't want to modify a string, then you can declare your string as const, like so. And as you can see, if I declare as const, if I try to do my name plus equal A, you can see I get an error here. So I can't add more characters to the end of the string, and I cannot call erase to delete characters. So if I declare it as const, I can never change the contents of the string. So that's it for this video, and if you found this tutorial helpful, make sure you give this video a like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.